So guys, we got some big, big news coming from the devs and the campfire talk that happened yesterday on Diablo 4's YouTube channel. They did a live stream of a campfire talk talking about all kinds of updates. Let's break everything down, kind of what my thoughts are and what is actually changing inside the game. So when it comes to Diablo 4, a few things that are changing, which I was really, really excited about. I don't know if I'm going to post the reaction video live up on the channel, but I may just do that. But Let's pop in here. I just want to go over a few things and just kind of explain what's happening and what changes are coming uh, with the, the new dev uh, talk that happened yesterday. So first and foremost, the biggest thing that I'm really excited about is the Nightmare Dungeon system. Okay, this is the first thing that they kind of went over and just talked about. They really felt that Nightmare Dungeons and the sigils were just too weak. Okay, they weren't like giving us enough XP. They were not doing enough for us uh, as far as players. Because right now, to be honest, the only thing that you really, really do Nightmare Dungeons for is, you know, you just do them to level up your, uh, your, um, what are they, the glyphs. You level up your glyphs right now. That's the only thing that you really use them for. Um, there's no additional XP. You, the extra travel time it takes to get from one to another is just insane. Like when you pop one, for example, let's just pop one just so I can showcase this to you guys. So it pops a Nightmare Sigil. It shows you exactly where it is. And now I have to travel all the way to this waypoint, and then I have to walk there, right? So this is a lot, a lot of time that gets wasted just to do Nightmare Dungeons when you're not gaining any more XP than farming a normal dungeon. And the rewards, really the only bonus is to level up the glyphs. So now what is coming in that I'm most excited about inside the dev stream was, now what they're going to do is allow you to teleport to this instantly, Okay, so what this means is, is I have this, I click on it, and I'm going to be able to teleport directly to the start of the dungeon and then just start accessing it. So I could just be sitting in Kovashad, I can look at all of my sigils that I have crafted or that I have found from previous Nightmare Dungeons, and I can just chain through these and just teleport directly to them from here. This is an absolute fantastic change, and I think it was 100% necessary. We were actually talking about this a couple of days ago live on stream, which is just incredible that this is happening. So that is number one. Second is the increased EXP. If you guys haven't known or you guys have been around the web, even videos that I've done on my channel, where we talked about certain dungeons to farm, uh, the biggest and most known one is Champion's Demise. Everybody has been farming this dungeon. Up until recently, I think it just got nerfed. But even then, the, the EXP still isn't too bad. But you've been nerfing. They've been nerfing all of the dungeons because all of us have been farming these dungeons nonstop for EXP. Because it's more efficient, right? The more time that it takes to travel to a Nightmare Dungeon, you know, come back to town, teleport to the next waypoint. If you're playing in a group, now everybody has to get here and wait. Like that travel, this is a short travel time, but imagine if it was a long travel time. You know, like let's say it's this dungeon here, or an, excuse me, uh, like I'm really bad. This is a bad example. Like this dungeon way out here and this waypoint wasn't here and we had to start from here. I mean, like some travel times are just super, super long and it just really crank, you know, cracks down on the amount of XP you can efficiently gain per hour. Now, I know not everybody is a hardcore grinder like that, but if that is your goal, then the travel time in Nightmare Dungeons is just too long. I don't think that is something that needs to be implemented, so I'm super happy that it changed. Now, the EXP is the biggest thing. Now, they are going to be shifting to this where we're going to be getting huge amounts of XP to be able to grind Nightmare Dungeons so it's actually worth it. To be honest, guys, ever since I got my abilities and all of my glyphs leveled up to 15 that I needed for my builds, I have not gone past that. I have not completed another Nightmare Dungeon because I just don't need it. The max glyph level is 21, and it would be really nice to not only max out all of your glyphs, but it would be really, really cool to be able to grind all the way up to Nightmare Dungeon 100 and really test my character. Because right now, there's no incentive to do that, especially if you're trying to grind in the end game and get to level 100, which is exactly what the devs want us to use Nightmare Dungeons for. So big, big change. I'm super happy about that. The next huge thing that I want to talk about is hardcore characters. I don't know about you guys, but I just finished my level 100 character on softcore, and now we're grinding really hard for the hardcore character. So let's take a look at something that they changed. So we all know inside the hardcore character, you have an elixir. I don't have one yet, but you have an, a cheat death elixir, which is really, really cool. It's the same thing. It pops for 30 minutes. While it's popped, if you die, it triggers it, and then you cannot use one for another 30 minutes. But there's another item, the scroll of escape which you can use in Diablo 4, which will instantaneously teleport you 
from anywhere that you are in any boss fight, anything like that, straight back to town and you are completely safe. Now, a number of players, which you guys have probably seen clips of, is people disconnecting or people dying because of disconnect lag these issues. Now, in an in a, in a attempt to not have this be abused in a way, what the devs are going to be implementing is, is as long as you have a scroll of escape and you were to disconnect, it is going to consume a scroll of escape and teleport you back to town. Okay, now there's, of course, there's a lot, a lot of variables to this. And, you know, the devs have to really make sure that you are disconnected. And I hope that, you know, it's it doesn't become like an abused thing in hardcore on your way to 100. But that is the big change is that if you a wild storm, your power gets knocked out, maybe Diablo servers are just really bad and you get disconnected while you're in the middle of a fight or anything like that. Because there have been reports of people who have disconnected and have completely lost their character altogether, especially at the high levels in the 80s and 90s. So now the new thing that's rolling out is if you get disconnected, it, it will consume or consume consume. It will consume a scroll of escape, which will be really, really cool to help save your character. Now, I really I, they haven't they didn't speak on too much of the guidelines on what they would do if people are abusing this, especially if you rack up a bunch of these and then, you know, you just got your buddy ready to pull the plug. If you're about to die or something, I hope that nobody abuses it. Please don't do that. Uh, but as long as you have a scroll of escape, uh, escape, it will consume it on disconnect to save your hardcore character, which is just really, really cool if you ask me. So now let's get into the seasonal changes that are coming to Diablo 4. Now, these are huge, huge changes that are going to happen. And I think that are like the whole campfire stream was just a complete dub, if you ask me. So inside the game, you're going to have the what's called the fog of war. As you can see, I'm a hardcore character. You have a bunch of area of the map that you cannot access. Like I cannot see these things right now on my normal character. I have the map completely exposed and I have all the altars of Lilith. So what changes that they are going to make so that way it kind of reduces the man. I don't want to have to redo all these again just for a brand new seasonal character. It really sucks that I, you know, I can't see the map and I can't do these things. So the two huge things that they are changing guys is they are uplifting the fog of war. So as long as I've completed it in at least season or excuse me, a uh, softcore or hardcore, and I have the entire map exposed when I start my seasonal character, the entire map is going to be exposed, which is just awesome. It's going to allow you to see all the dungeons, travel where you need to go. Now, there is one thing to note that here is that, as you can see, all the main city waypoints will be active, but you'll still have to go get all the other ones just like you do now on a new character or a new hardcore character, as you see on my screen. But the entire fog or the entire map will be lifted. There are the fog of war will be lifted, and it's a really cool thing. The second big thing is the altars of Lilith. Okay, I don't have uh, I only have a couple here, but all the altars of Lilith that you see here on my screen that are completely blacked out, as you can see here, it says claimed. If you have all of the altars of Lilith claimed in softcore or hardcore, when you start your seasonal character, not only is the entire map revealed, but all of these altars will be grayed and blacked out just like this, and you will not have to claim them again. This is absolutely fantastic because I know we are all dreading it. It really sucks that after getting my level 100, I even have to do this on hardcore, but I understand that it's a different kind of character, but it still sucks. Now, however, you will be able to save all of your altar of Lilith points, your skill points. So, you know, the where it says plus two strength or plus five decks or whatever, all of those are going to also transfer over as well as your renown. Okay, all of your skill points are going to transfer over, which is very, very important. This really does help out your character in a brand new season start. It's going to give you a really good leg up um, on the start of the season. Now, the second thing that a lot of people get confused about with this mechanic, and this is what's going to be new that's going to happen, is your renown points. Okay, total renown earned is 525. It takes a lot to get to the full renown here. Okay, I think it's it's 400, 500, and then 600, or it's 550, and then 600, just to finish out the last one. Now, even if you have them all completed, like I do on my softcore character, when you start a seasonal character, you're going to keep a portion of the renown earned going into the new season. Now, what this means is, I'm not sure exactly on the exact numbers as far as how much um, renown you are going to keep in total i think a lot of this is due to because you're going to have all of the altars of lilith essentially done if you've already completed them 
So I think you're going to get a portion of the Renown back. However, you are still going to have to do Strongholds. You're still going to have to do Side Dungeons. You're still going to have to do these things to finish maxing out your Renown in your Seasonal Character. But it is really, really cool that all of this stuff is going to transfer over. And you're going to start with some Renown going into the Season. So when you come up onto your map here and you're like, Oh man, I don't have to re-explore the entire map and get all that Renown. Now all I'm going to have to do is do some dungeons, do some strongholds, and do some side quests, and then boom, my renown is complete, and then we are all set. These changes are absolutely fantastic because I can tell you already that it is a drain on my hardcore character who's level 40 that I have to do this all over again inside my hardcore character. I mean, it was still cool that some stuff transferred over, but still... The fact that I have to go redo all my Altars of Lilith, re-explore the entire map, is really, really daunting, especially on the casual player side of the game. I'm pretty hardcore in the game, but I know there's people that are even more hardcore than me. So having these things lifted, being able to have portions of them transferred over to you start of your season, really, really, to me, incentivizes like, hey... Even though you have to start brand new, we're going to give you a bunch of cool stuff, and it's going to really give you a jump start on your seasonal character, which I think is fantastic. However, do Blizzard, Blizzard, hear me out. At least bring back the Rebirth feature. I really did enjoy Rebirthing in Diablo 4, or Diablo 3, excuse me. So maybe they bring that back. Otherwise, you're going to be deleting and making new and deleting and making new and deleting characters. So hopefully they do a Rebirth, but that's just a personal uh, note I would like. But yeah, guys, those are the main changes that are coming to diablo 4 in the coming future some of these things are going to be rolled out early and then some are going to not going to come until season two um oh there's one big last one i forgot to mention which is absolutely huge is our gems okay all of your gems in your inventory will no longer be in the slot what the devs are going to do is put this into your materials section on your inventory i guess or your material stats so basically what you're going to be able to do is have your gems no longer take up inventory space or stash space, which is very important. And you're going to have a slot here for your gems. Now you're asking, well, hey, War, how do I like be still be able to put gems into my stuff? You're still going to be able to come over to the alchemist or excuse me, the jeweler. You're going to be able to come over to the jeweler and you're still going to be able to craft. So like, let's say I had no gems here. They're all inside of my material section. I can still come in here, craft one. It would, you know, lower the numbers here in my materials and then it would pop it to my inventory like this. And then I could put it inside of an item and then boom, Bob's your uncle, you're all done. So I really think that is very, very cool. Now on the flip side, what happens when I have like these level of gems and then I need to upgrade to the next level. The only other thing that I can suggest that you do is take them back out and you're going to have to save them to upgrade again and just use the ones that are here to upgrade into the next level. Or you could just sell them if you really want to. They don't sell for much, but you could do that. But I would save them and just upgrade into the next one. But this is a huge, huge improvement to our inventory. Um, I really hope that they also improve our inventory as far as our aspects as well as our consumables. Especially if you're going to be chaining Nightmare Dungeons. However, I think with the new changes, it will really help on kind of mitigating that. And you won't be holding on to too many. Because the strategy before is they'll try to hold on as to many as possible that were the same. And then just chain them. But now you don't have to, so it really doesn't matter. You should be able to blow through those pretty quick. So the gem changes are absolutely fantastic. I'm really excited about that. I hope they make some more changes to, uh, to our inventory in the future. And please, 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 Blizzard, give us some increased stash space. This would be fantastic if they gave us some more stash space. Four is not enough for one, not only one character, but for multiple characters. If you're playing all five classes like I am, four tabs is not enough. I don't know if they're going to bring it in DLC or if they're going to do it in expansions or what have you to increase our stash space. But we definitely need more. We just need it. I mean, for all you super hoarders out there, you're going to need more space. You're going to want to hold on to multiple powers, especially for different builds that you're going to be doing. So please, Blizzard, side note, please increase the stash space. But with that said, guys, those are all the changes that came from the dev stream yesterday. And I'm really, really excited to see what's going to happen in the future. These things are going to roll out pretty, pretty quick. So be on the lookout for updates to your client and to the game. Super excited about these changes. Like the video, guys. Let me know down in the comments what do you think. And uh, subscribe if you guys are new. And as always, stay gaming. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.